So, and it's really interesting in that the list and the motivation of this film, because that, that leads me to want to get your thoughts on the contemporary situation in South Africa, because you could have, frankly, quite rightly, at least in my view, after a lifetime of sort of political struggle and personal risk and then service in the first two democratic governments of South Africa, sort of, you know, uh, I guess, watch the game and relaxed. <laughs> but you're sort of still out there. And you wrote, you wrote a piece, I believe it was in, two thir- in 2013. It was called How the ANC's Fastian uh, Pact Sold Out South Africa's Poorest. And you sort of, and, and there's a transition here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you sort of criticized the ANC's kind of acceptance of kind of global neoliberalism uh, under the presidencies of Mandela and Mbeki, which you uh, served in. That's one aspect of it, but you still seem to uh, have, obviously, from Mandela, a great deal, I mean, enormous respect. For Mbeki, a lot of respect. And in many respects, it might be interesting to get your thoughts on Mbeki because I think Mbeki, you know, there's a very fixed view of him in, in the West and the United States. Uh, but under Zuma you have gotten to a point where this sort of critique of neoliberalism has critique has sort of fused with your concerns about corruption in South Africa, corruption in the ANC, to the point where you have left the party and you're sort of working on a new iteration of politics in South Africa, which is grassroots driven, which actually maybe harkens back in many ways to the work that you and so many others did in the ANC. So maybe if you could just sort of lead us through starting with this critique of the ANC and neoliberalism and, and where we are today? Well, um, one has to start with the incredible achievement of toppling apartheid yes. through our mass struggle led by the ANC. Uh, and the wisdom, uh, you know, it's not just Mandela. There was a collective leadership of luminaries, Governor Becky, Walter Sisulu, um, and so many others who were imprisoned with him and many who died. Uh, some uh, executed, like Vujicilinini, the trade unionist, and others killed in detention. So a huge sacrifice. The world never thought that we would be able to remove apartheid. In the end, there was the negotiated settlement, and uh, mainly because, in the main, uh, the ruling class in South Africa and its political uh, elite, the National Party, from Boerta to de Klerk, saw that, uh, they saw the writing on the wall, that there would be a bloody revolution if they didn't reform. Uh, and they wanted a reform in terms of keeping property and the economic control intact. Um, at that particular point in time, 1990, and our first elections, 94, there's huge uh, bloodshed in the country. Many more thousands died in that period than in the period pre to the lifting of the ban on the ANC and other liberation movements in the country. Uh, so you, you, one has to understand yeah. that particular context. It's, it's not easy. Uh, in the process, though, I feel, in retrospect, and there's nothing like 2020 vision, sure. um, but I feel that we actually could have got a much better deal, given that uh, the masses were in the ascendancy. We had strong United Trade Union movement, um, and we had the support from the whole world. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, in the concessions which were made at the negotiating table, and there is give and take when you're having to get through a situation where you you haven't beaten them on the battlefield, uh, but of course they're fearing the way things can go. Uh, in in that particular situation, when we examine the compromises, we we gave too much on the economic front. And again, when you've got the captains of industry and the leaders of the capitalist world saying to Mandela and leadership that if you guys go through with your um, radical nationalization, land redistribution, 
uh, you're going to be isolated. You're not going to receive any investments from abroad. You know, your your country mm. is going to be stunted, and you know it, it's up to you. And you're looking at the poverty in the country, and you're looking at the violence from the right wing, and you feel that the way ahead is through taking what's on offer because you know you will win the election hands down as the ANC did, well over 60% of the vote. You take the political levers of power, and along with Mandela and his able lieutenant and Becky, very bright people, and a collective, and I was part of it, you feel that let's have our hands on the levers of power, and we will then erode the economic order and get to the point where we can control it we did that, and that's what I call the Faustian Pact, and not just pointing finger at Mandela or Mbeki, who right, were our two right. most leading people. I, I was in the Communist Party as well as the ANC, Joe Slovo. You know, we all agreed to that. Um, a little bit of misgiving. Some of us said, you know, we could step up the struggle some more. Let, let me give an example in looking back where I say I think the balance of forces were more in our favor. That threat from the West or business and investment that we would be isolated and so on, um, would the African Americans stood by in your country and allowed their government to put the squeeze on South Africa? Would the anti apartheid movement straightening the world have been silent in the face of those kind of attempts by you know, what led is the Washington Consensus right. and the EU. We would have, we had that very important detachment on our side and the strength of our own people. So we missed that particular opportunity. And, you know, when I say a Faustian pact, uh, we accepted the political power in exchange for putting off the economic to another day. But what we do know, and we knew this before then, which is where I kicked myself in the, uh, the, the pants, is that those who dominate society economically, even if they don't have the control of most political parties, they are able to call the tune. They erode your power. And this is the straitjacket we're in. Of course, the Soviet Union had collapsed, not that we wanted a Soviet-style rule, we wanted democracy, but at least when pre the Soviet, when the Soviet Union existed, there was this, this knowledge that we could rely on East European countries, China, socialism, to give us a balance against the West. But that, that all broke down, which, which made it all the more um, likely to go along with the scenario which, which I explain and call that Faustian Pact. Um, the trouble is when you had, and I come to your question about Tabo Mbeki, the most brilliant mind amongst us, a man who had um, Marxist understanding, uh, very deep that is, who had a tremendous strategic overview of the world, and um, who was really with Mandela and after striving to walk this tightrope to help us get into a situation where we would become masters of our own destiny in terms of building our e economic power. Um, okay, you, one might say, well, that was going to be impossible even for Mbeki. I, I'm just making a point that with someone of the sophistication, and I'm not talking in elitist terms, of an Mbeki, um, we had perhaps a chance. But at the same time, in that Faustian pact, you have building up forces, which I would say are on the, the right wing of the ANC, uh, narrow nationalist groupings, people who are ready to to make the most of crony capitalism, which, mm -hmm. of course, is something very difficult to oppose, to defend, to prevent, if you aren't very, very rigorous. And that opening occurs. I'm not against the emergence of black capitalists in our country, 
but you need that occurring when you have very strong leadership. But when you have a leadership, and I'm talking about a leadership that succeeds in Becky off the This is the current that, leadership of Jacob Zuma. Where you get crony capitalism uh, running unchecked, then you lead under the present administration and a president who, unlike in Becky, was clearly facing very serious corruption charges um, and is still doing everything possible to keep himself out of court. And this is where uh, he had tremendous support from that faction, which has now grown and dominated the ANC in our movement, um, who want to make, make wealth for themselves in the first place. And this is where instead of serving the people, you become and you find yourselves in a situation of serving oneself. So that at present in South Africa is the way the pendulum has moved. And one still hopes to see that uh, within the ANC and our liberation movement, that positive forces, and there is a struggle taking place, will come to the fore. But I happen to feel that uh, it's good, and I support those comrades within who are struggling, but I feel that we need a voice, an organized voice, to the left of the ANC now, uh, because we're not just talking about uh, the struggle against racial oppression. It's absolutely intertwixed with capitalism and capitalist exploitation, and we need a very clear-cut voice to the left of the ANC, which raises the question of socialism. In the past, that voice and organization was the Communist Party of South Africa, which I've left to join with a nascent emerging left socialist opposition out of trade unions, particularly the Metal Workers Union, NUMSA, uh, a united front which is uh, emerging, uh, and civil society. Uh, it's going to be a tough battle. I'm not, um, uh, I'm, I'm not over-optimistic about it. I think it will take time. But I think it will also speak to people within the ANC and the liberation movement as such uh, to, to get them doing similar work from within. But we're doing this work from without as pressure on our government and, and on our ruling party, the ANC. Well, uh, one more final question. We only have a, a couple minutes left, and it's okay. all fascinating. But I really, I know that you like to get uh, the opportunity to also speak out. You are, uh, you know, a part of your identity is you're Jewish, Jewish revolutionary, Jewish socialist. You've, as part of that, spoken out a lot in on the issue of Israel Palestine, and I want to give you the opportunity in the final couple of minutes we have to share your perspective on that. Well, you see, for South Africans, it's not difficult to see the racist colonial uh, character of Israel, the supplanting of the indigenous Palestinian people uh, by Zionism, which is a, a, a narrow, um, inclusivist nationalism, using uh, the Bible to justify the claims that the land belongs to uh, the Jewish people and to none other. I mean, this is absolutely unjust. It's ahistorical. And the methods they use remind all of us South African freedom fighters, bar none, who have visited not just the occupied territories, Gaza, the West Bank, but Israel itself, to see the discrimination against Palestinians, against the Bedouin, against people of color within Israel, whatever they claim about their democracy, these are second-class citizens. But, of course, the appalling military occupation, uh, the absolute horrendous siege of Gaza, the constant uh, killings of Palestinian people. And uh, as someone who's of Jewish descent, uh, when they claim that they're doing this for the Jewish people, I say not in my name, along with a growing number of, of, of 
Jewish people in the United States and South Africa, uh, Europe and elsewhere. Um, uh, Mandela said we cannot be free until the Palestinian people are free. And I, I take that to heart. So, look, we've, we've, I've made the point about that. Please let me end by again appealing to your good listeners to give support to this great internationalist um, film that we're making, London Recruits, and to check our website, which is just London Recruits. They'll get enormous information about how they can help make this film and spread the word. Thanks very much it's, indeed. It's linked on our website. And, and Ronnie Cosrolls, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it immensely. A pleasure. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sam Cedar, and this is an Ann Coulter doll. You should not be immigrating here. Yeah. Stay in your country and hate us. For smart progressive talk and a little bit of this and even a little bit of that. Mission accomplished. Subscribe to our podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And like us on Facebook to get some of our best video clips.